Heliwood Seeker Waiting for the Internal Sun is the first institutional exhibition of the artist's work in a UK public gallery in over 15 years. And it brings together film, archival material, and recreations of two large scale installations uh, realized by Otis Seeker during his career. And um, in creating the exhibition, we wanted to bring together a combination of archival storytelling. So visitors to the exhibition will be able to explore his practice, um, his life, through um, amazing archival images um, from the estate in Rio de Janeiro, um, as well as texts that kind of guide you through um, this period of time in his life. The exhibition focuses on quite a specific time within Oitseka's career, uh, just over a decade from the end of the 1960s through until his untimely death um, in 1980, aged just 42. And this was a particularly uh, fruitful period for Oitseka. It's when he made some of his most um, experimental and radical propositions for artworks that really um, sought to engender a kind of dissolution between art and life that brought together incredibly um, immersive environments using different materials, light, uh, sound, texture, all to um, kind of give you this very sensorial and um, direct experience that related to your own body as a spectator. And visitors to the exhibition uh, will encounter several works made during this period. Um, many of which have been recreated based on the many writings, uh, notebooks, uh, letters, drawings that Oitaseka made uh, within his lifetime, uh, which are all housed at the archive uh, in Rio de Janeiro. And what's so great about being able to recreate these works is that rather than having original artworks that are, say, on plinths or behind glass and not able to be interacted with, um, by recreating, we are able to, you know, create that direct kind of bodily encounter that Oitaseka really intended for the pieces themselves. Yes, I'm Cesar Oitaseka Filho. I'm the artistic director for the center Oitaseka in Rio and the project Oitaseka. And Elio's nephew. Well, a lot of people come with the question like, why build and present these works nowadays? I think today is even more important than 30 years ago or 40 years ago, mainly because the connection of this work with the body. As we are all the time out of our own bodies, like navigating through the web and through other stuff, forgetting about this connection to be in the present moment. I think those works, they are kind of tools to bring you to the present. When you wear a parangolé or you go inside the penetrable, you're not keeping thinking about the past or the future, but in this relation in the present moment with those works. In the ground floor gallery, um, you will find um, a very large scale installation called Filter Project, which is a work from 1972, a maze-like piece that takes you through on this labyrinthian journey where you encounter um, translucent colored walls, uh, live radio recordings, a TV player, and even an orange juice dispenser. And this work is very much um, a, a key kind of portrait of Brazil, uh, Oitaseca's native country that he made when he was living in exile um, in New York. And he was making it at the time when the military dictatorship in Brazil was present. Um, this was a time when a lot of artists and writers were being persecuted because of their practices, because of their beliefs. And Oitaseca saw in its place um, a very much a sanitization of culture happening. Um, and so this work, through its kind of direct encounter by taking us on this journey, um, highlights this kind of aspect and the, his critical nature of what was happening um, back home at the time. Also in the ground floor gallery, um, you'll come across a series of uh, what are called parangoles, which um, is a body of work that Oitaseka made from the mid 1960s all the way up until his death. Um, these are wearable artworks, essentially, uh, often taking the form of capes, uh, banners, things that you wrap around your body and really activate through uh, movement. This is really an intention to kind of dissolve the boundaries between art and life, 
Um, and often these works were inscribed with political or poetic messages, um, intended to be worn um, in, obviously in galleries, but also out on the streets. And a lot of the inspiration um, came from Oitasika's time uh, with the Samba schools, um, particularly one in a favela called Manguera in Rio. And he trained as a solo dancer and he worked and created these parangoles um, and organized performances uh, with different members of Samba troops. Famously, um, in the mid-1960s, um, a performance was stopped at the Museum of Modern Art Rio uh, by the director, and the performance had to continue outside um, on the streets of Rio. Uh, my name is Neville Dalmeida, and I am here today for the installation I made with Helio Chica, Cosmo Coca, number five. It's homage, homage to Jimi Hendrix. I met this artist, Eli Wojcicka. Wojcicka was an artist, and I was a film director. I want to be an artist, and Wojcicka wants to be a film director. We were very, the contemporary art was starting. We decided to do an artistic partnership. We decided to do a work that would be able to, to unite to make a bridge between contemporary art and cinema. This exhibition is taking place on the 50th anniversary of Oitasika's and Neville Damida, the artist filmmaker's groundbreaking series, The Cosmococas, which they created together in New York uh, in 1973. And they called this body of work, um, they termed it a quasi-cinema. And this was really a way to create a mode of cinema that was uh, non-linear, non-narrative, and perhaps resistant to a lot of the Hollywood spectacle that was very present, especially in New York at the time. And within each of these installations, uh, visitors enter into a very kind of um, uh, encompassing environment with um, projections on uh, all four walls and the ceiling, um, as well as different objects to interact with. With this particular work that we've recreated, which is number five in the series, which is called CC5 Hendrix War, um, we have slide projections of Jimi Hendrix, um, his album War Heroes, which is also the soundtrack for the installation, as well as hammocks that are suspended from wall to wall that visitors are invited to relax in. I have a proposition. I said to Oitzik, my friend, let's do Jimi. Of course we're going to do Jimi. So I'm going to see about Jimi Hendrix. He was a parachute in the American army. And when you are a parachute, you jump on space. When you jump on space, the parachute opens and you stay like, you are between sky and earth. The hammock is the same thing. You are between sky and earth. That's the idea of hammock. The exhibition is called Waiting for the Internal Sun and it's lifted directly from a piece of writing by Otisika from one of his notebooks uh, where he speaks about lying as if waiting for the internal sun, the non-representative leisure. And this theme of leisure is very much a thematic undercurrent for the exhibition, uh, specifically related to a term that Otisika coined in 1969 called cre leisure which is a portmanteau of the word creativity and leisure, but also related to the Portuguese verb criar, which means uh, to believe. And in formulating this term, he speaks about a kind of radical passivity or active laziness, the simple act of doing nothing as being a vehicle to expression and to fostering creativity. And it was really his belief that by creating these uh, alternative encounters, we can move towards alternative ways of living um, and experiencing our everyday life that is perhaps resistant to certain binds, whether that's capitalism, patriarchy, heteronormativity, whiteness. Um, and so when visitors experience all of these different installations, um, that kind of total body encounter is very much in line with um, Oitasika's uh, theorizing from this moment in time.